all right guys the first 12 ax7 preamp stage has been constructed it is currently powered on plate voltage is 107 volts which is around 50 volts lower than what it should be indicating that the plate current is a bit too high b plus is high as well we are getting 255 volts as opposed to the approximately 233 volts that we need but this might be due to the fact that the second stage is not constructed so that the the loading effects from the power supply are not as expected it could also mean that i need to mess with the voltage dropping resistors a little bit but we shall see that after the second stage has been constructed but for now i'm going to check by applying a signal if it does work but first let's take a quick look at the grid bias voltage by measuring actually the cathode voltage so i'm going to very carefully move this over to the cathode because this is plugged into mains right now so we have 2 volts dc at the cathode meaning that the grid is uh, minus 2 volts relative to the cathode again this bias is off by around 1 volt so but not so far off to indicate that there is something seriously wrong maybe some biasing issue so i will mess with that later on but as i said before let's check if it at least passes a signal okay so i am feeding in a signal at the input of around you can see the yellow trace that represents the 100 millivolt peak input signal and this the output probe is connected to the the coupling capacitor at the plate and the voltage out is around 1.5 volt peak the the output is the scope is set to 1 volt per division and the input is set to 200 millivolt per division so we can see that we do have some gain and if you do the math it is around 15 which is actually much less than predicted the predicted value is around 56 so there could be a couple of reasons for that but i will investigate further once the second stage is assembled again it could be loading effects on the power supply and what not or it could be could be the tube i am not sure about the origin of the tube it may or may not be a new old stock tube it might be a used tube and i've been told by my friend asnain from instagram that the the store from which i purchased the tube is known to mislabel the tubes so they are new old stock tubes sometimes sometimes they are used army surplus and things like that and they tend to be mislabeled so it might be you know an ecc 82 sold as an ecc 83 or something like that but at least for now i'm happy that we are passing a signal and we do have gain so that's better than nothing i guess and we do have a nice clean sine wave coming out doesn't appear to be too much distortion i guess that this the trace is moving around a little bit that could mean that could indicate some uh, 60 hertz noise maybe but let's see it, well it's a start i guess all right so let's take a closer look at the circuit we have the input coming in it's kind of hard to see but the middle pin of the input jack let me show you on the little diagram that i made the center pin on the input jack that's where this yellow shielded wire is hooked up i say shielded in the loosest sense of the term because basically inside this outer sleeve 
this insulation there is an inner there is another insulated wire and around that not wrapped around it but just along it is little bit of bare wire that is you know acting as a quote on quote shield but uh, i went with this for now i might change it later if i do have harm issues but yep so that is going to r8 the 68k resistor to the grid pin 2 of the 12 ax7 this is the 68k resistor right here and this was originally supposed to be mounted according to the the layout that i was following on the tax strip but i moved it over here because i wanted to run the shielded wire as much as i could the quote on quote shielded like i said almost all the way to the grid so here's that that is the 68k resistor r8 and again at the node before the 68k from the input jack we are coming into this resistor over here this is the grid resistor the like 1 meg r11 resistor going to ground this is the main kind of like sort of star ground point so this white lead comes over from pin 3 of the 12 ax7 to the tax strip and this is the cathode circuit here is the bypass capacitor the 1 microfarad capacitor and here is the cathode resistor the 1.5k which i may bump up later on because uh, or i may reduce later on because of uh, i'm not happy with the bias value that i have right now and from the plate pin 1 okay so from the plate pin 1 of the 12 ax7 we have this lead and this resistor this is the load resistor r3 the 100k load resistor going here to uh, i am poking around inside but i have made sure that the capacitors are discharged and it is unplugged so it's safe so this is going to b plus this resistor is for the next stage i haven't wired it in yet but it's just over there now this goes to b plus which is supposed to be 233 volts it's a little high now but i'll see what we can do about that and i have also connected the leads that i'll be needing for the next stage now cuz uh, the tube socket was getting congested so i wanted to do these now cuz it would be a mess to get in and try to do them later and this is the coupling cap to the next stage so this will be the input to the next stage and i will start wiring the circuit from here on i also twisted the the filament wiring together a little bit tighter and i have added two 1 ohm resistors in parallel in series with the filaments because the filament voltage was high even after the tubes were plugged in while it was only around 40 or 50 millivolts too high i was getting paranoid about burning up my supposedly new old stock tube so i put these in and now it is just a little bit below 6.3 volts a lot less scary if you ask me so here's the tubes plugged in the 12 ax7 on the left and the leaning tower of el84 on the right and these like i said are tubes of dubious origin so they may or may not be new old stock and i have heard that uh, they may be mislabeled and in fact the first 12 ax7 that i used the label the tube number is not readable and this gave me a way too high plate current so the plate voltage was really low it is still low now with the tube i have in now but not so far off as to cause concern because i was getting around 64 volts at the plate which is way too low so i have a doubt that this is not a 12 ax7 
somehow I feel it is an ECC 88 my friend Aznain from Instagram who is very knowledgeable about tubes he feels that it is a ECC 82 so let's see I will try to get hold of some more tubes of a more credible origin maybe hopefully with the original bell packing or maybe some mullard tubes if I'm lucky actually I doubt I can afford mullard tubes so bell it's going to be okay so it's like 5 20 a.m. thought I'd do a quick update before I called it a day the second I called it a night but the second preamp stage has been assembled it is powered on right now through the variac and the dim bulb current limiter no magic smoke which is good but the drop across the plate load resistor is rather high of the second uh, plate load resistor of the second preamp stage should be around 95 volts but we have around 145 volts which means that we are drawing too much current plate current is high similar problem to that which I had on the first uh, stage this is despite the fact that B plus is actually lower than what it should be so let's check B plus I'll try to do this without getting electrocuted B plus is low by around 30 volts but we are still drawing more plate current than we should be so I guess that is a problem for the morning if it isn't already the morning all right I decided to go ahead and wire up the EL84 output stage while I wait for my replacement 12 AX7 valve to arrive I decided to try another valve to rule out a mislabeled or a worn out valve before messing with the bias for the preamp stage so yep now the EL now the EL84 stage is wired up currently the amp is powered on as usual through the dim bulb and the variac the isolated variac the EL84 is plugged in but not the 12 AX7 things seem to be all right so far we have 240 volts going in 5 volts less than the line the 5 volt drop being due to the dim bulb tester and we have a B plus of 247 of course there is barely going to be a drop across the the primary winding of the output transformer so that is pretty close to I haven't checked but it is probably pretty close to what we have at the filter cap and carefully moving this to the cathode we have around 7.58 volts which is little bit more than where did it go the 6. Point, more than the 6.9 volts as expected because I use a little bit more resistance in the cathode I pumped it up to 200 ohms because I want my tubes to last longer and I felt that the quiescent power dissipation was a little bit too close for comfort the tube is glowing very brightly I'm not sure if that's too bright but uh, the last time I checked the, the heater voltage was right so maybe it, we might have little bit higher heater voltage right now because the 12 the 12 AX7 is not plugged in but even when it is plugged in that seems to be a quite a bright glow but maybe it's normal and that's it seems to be working well because the fact that we have cathode bias which is pretty close to the expected value 
seems to indicate that things are all right i'm going to try passing a signal through it let's see what happens i've got a dummy 8 ohms load which is 220 watt 4 ohms resistors in series so let's see if this thing can pass the signal and then maybe after that i'll turn it things off and we can take a closer look and the tone stack has also been built at this point okay so the scope is across the dummy load the signal generator is being fed at the input of the tone the tone stack and we do have a signal out let me freeze this so we get a closer look a decent looking sine wave of course it is a very low amplitude i'm feeding in 2 and a half volts we are getting around 44 millivolts out yep 44 millivolts around 50 something like that focus yeah around 50 millivolts of course this is in the voltage amplification stage and the the output transformer steps up steps down the voltage and steps up the current so that is expected so maybe i should check at the plate let's see so we are on the plate the scope is on the plate using my 100x probe here because there is high voltage here and i have blown up my scope once already i don't want to do it again twice already but we have pretty good voltage here we have a peak of 115 volts so yep there is quite a bit of voltage gain in the stage even though that is not the primary purpose here considering that we are putting in just 2 and a half volts that might be a little bit more than expected actually i'll have to i'm not sure if i have hooked up the correct uh, secondary windings of the transformer i'll do a little dig a little bit more into it but for now i'm happy that it works and interestingly i can I don't know if you can hear it but probably not but I can actually hear a little bit of a tone from the vibration of the output transformer so just out of curiosity let's yep I'm moving the treble control so the tone stack is working we can attenuate or boost the treble middle control little bit of effect but not much because the frequency is fairly high and i expect the bass control not to do anything at this frequency yep so tone stack appears to be working as well so far everything seems nice let's see what happens if we uh, put in a lower frequency let's see what can we put go to the signal generator let's put in maybe 500 hertz 5 i wish i had a separate signal generator it would be easier but this hand take is pretty good 5 wait damn i'm messing with the amplitude no one to mess with that frequency 5 100 okay 500 hertz go back to scope we have 500 hertz let's see if the bass control does anything uh, a little bit but not much but again this is a very interdependent interestingly the treble control still seems to have seems to have a lot of effect on it so i don't know what's up with that but again this tone stack is not very precise the fender marshall box tone stack and everything is 
very interdependent on everything else let's try one thing let's try center center and then just move this still just a little bit of effect maybe we need to go lower than 500 hertz back to awg let's try 100 hertz and uh, back to scope yep that's very low we'll have to change our always trip up on the controls there is a little distortion at this frequency but it is quite low for a guitar amplifier so, yep and we can see still not a lot of change but we can definitely see the effect and again treble still has a much more effect on it but the intricacies of the fmb tone stack are rather mind-boggling oh wait i'm getting a pretty good change on the bass control right now with mid all the way up this i believe is the mid where's trouble trouble almost all the way down so yup you can see that effect and all things considered that sine wave looks pretty okay obviously we'll need a much larger signal to overdrive it but uh, for now i'm happy that the tone stack and the output stage appear to be working fine actually i might try plugging in a speaker hmm. but yep so what remains the major issue to tackle now is the incorrect biasing of the preamp stages but hopefully the replacement valves will you know will work out fine and it won't need to be rebiased otherwise i might have to mess with the bias resistors so yep that's good let's turn off the signal generator and i'm curious now about the screen voltage what should it be it should be 239 volts so let's go back to dmm where is the dmm it's still on the cathode and let's move that carefully to the screen so where is the screen going to yep from here that's strange it's higher than now that can't be right screen is pin 9 yep that is definitely strange it should not be higher than the plate now that is something i need to look into okay so i found out that i had missed one component i had missed this 1k resistor after the rc filter going to the screen so i put that in but i was still getting a screen voltage higher than the plate voltage so i temporarily disconnected the resistor and connected this port wired as a variable resistor and i do not recommend anybody do it like this this is definitely an electrocution hazard do not do this at home but anyway i have adjusted this so that the difference between the screen voltage and the plate voltage is closer to what is shown on the schematic but uh, both the screen and the plate are a little bit high still i mean we have the same voltage difference between them 7 volts but uh, my plate is now at 250 around 253 volts which is a bit on the high side and 
especially considering that without the current limiter and the variac it will go up higher so i'm definitely think that i'm gonna have to do some um, adjusting of the power supply resistors and also very interesting i found that changing the screen voltage has a major effect on the plate voltage as well major effect and actually i'm curious now i'm gonna try if i can without shorting anything out because there is a good chance of sh shorting this out to the uh, the chassis i want to see the cathode voltage so my meter is gone on standby it's low on batteries but let's hope i can get like a reading before it goes off okay so we are still at it just shut off but we cathode voltage is still close to what it was 7 point something so yep everything seems to be okay but i think i'm gonna hold off attempting to connect a speaker until i do something about this first in regard to the power supply i feel that i should wait till i get the 12 ax7 in because it affects the loading how much the the, the power transformer secondary is loaded down so i could fan dangle it now but things could change when the current draw increases and maybe it would uh, maybe it would drop too much with both tubes inside let's see okay so let's run some quick math now based on the schematic the quiescent plate dissipation worked out to be 11.2 watts which i feel is a little bit too close to comfort to the 12 watt maximum of the el84 but let's see what we are getting now so first we need to know the plate current and which is going to be you know uh, the quiescent plate current is going to be the cathode voltage divided by the cathode resistance minus the screen current but let's neglect the screen current for a conservative estimate and let's be even more conservative by bumping up to 253 to 255 and okay the cathode so we have 7.2 approximately at the cathode and divided by 200 ohms that gives us 36 milliamperes estimated plate current okay 36 milliamperes let's keep that in mind and so power dissipation is quiescent plate voltage times the quiescent plate current so let's take 255 subtract from it the cathode voltage 7.2 that gives us 247.8 across the plate and let's multiply that by 36 milliamperes that's 8.9 watts so quite a bit lower than the 11.2 watts predicted from the schematic values even though we have a higher b plus and a higher plate voltage possibly that's a result of my bumped up cathode resistor so it's biased colder so 
maybe this could increase a little bit of water too it would still be under 11 watts I mean we could go to just about 11 watts if the B plus increases when it is plugged when the amplifier is plugged into the mains without the dim pulp current limiter causing a voltage drop so it may be possible that I do not need to mess with the main power supply voltage dropping resistor after all but let's see I will uh, wait till the 12 AX7 replacement tube arrives and let's see what kind of voltages and you know plate dissipations we are getting and if it all works out okay I mean I don't think the preamp stages running a little hot could cause any problems because they aren't drawing much current anyway but I really don't want to burn off my EL84s so but so far it seems like it'll be fine it what I could do if I'm having issues is I could replace this with a big high wattage 40 onshore meter and you know mess with it and I wouldn't want to do this when it's plugged into the mains but on the dim bulb and variac I could try to get the B plus just a little bit lower than what I want it to be and then hope that it's somewhat alright on the mains and I measured that 40 onshore meter and it's around 4.7 kilo ohms is what it's showing so I will have to replace that screen voltage dropping resistor with a 4.7k